A star can be much larger with more hydrogen. In this case, the process will be a little different. We will reach iron through the burning process. When iron starts forming, all other elements present will gradually burn out into iron. An iron peak will appear. The height of the peak is about an order of magnitude higher than that of lighter elements. This iron will naturally move to the center of the star with its heavier mass, where intense compression will come into effect. The compression will be so strong that a collapse will occur and this star turned supernova will explode as the temperature reaches about 4 times 10 to the power of 9 Kelvin. Not 10 to the power of 7, but 4 times 10 to the power of 9, which is 400 times more. Iron-56 will begin to split into alpha particles and neutrons. No energy is released, but rather it is minus 124 mega electron volt. This leads to the stratification of the elements in the star. The central area, consisting of gaseous iron, is highly compressed and balance is maintained by gravity and gas pressure. Gravity takes over when the gas pressure subsides as the electrons are absorbed by atomic nuclei. Eventually, the central region collapses, an unimaginable amount of energy is released and the outer shell of the star is thrown out into space as the star explodes. This is the so-called flying shell effect, which results in a rapid rise in temperature. A high density of neutrons appear and, during this time, which lasts only a few seconds, the nucleosynthesis of heavier elements takes place. It is the so-called rapid neutron capture process or R process. You might remember our discussion regarding underground nuclear explosions and that it lasts less than a microsecond, whereas here it lasts a few seconds. The critical mass for underground explosions was 20 to 30 kilograms of plutonium. At this point, it has a mass equal to the mass of the Sun, and this fast process, measured in seconds, leads to the synthesis of nuclei heavier than iron, where the neutron fluxes are 10 to the power of 28 neutron per square centimeter per second. And the temperature is about 1.6 billion Kelvin. Nucleosynthesis is in progress and heavier elements are obtained. We reach uranium. And we understand that after the combustion stage, the explosion leads to movement to the right. This is also caused by some residual effects, which occur due to the fact that neutrons are gradually being captured. That is, the so-called slow process or S process. But we can obtain uranium only as a result of an explosion. After that, a neutron star is obtained in the center, the formation of which has a radius of only 10 kilometers, the mass of which is approximately equal to the mass of the Sun with a high density. On the star's surface, there is an ephemeral layer of 10 to the power of minus 8 grams per cubic centimeter. But in the center, there is a tremendous density. And at this density, the matter is most likely in the form of cork gluon plasma. The most interesting thing is that if we move from the surface to a depth of about 2 kilometers, we encounter an interesting soup-like substance consisting mainly of neutrons, fewer protons, electrons, and rather large nuclei with a mass of about 500 mass units. In this place, the density of matter is the same as nuclear density. If we move even deeper into the star, the density is higher than that of nuclear density. It is very interesting that at a nuclear density level of a neutron star, it is possible to obtain nuclei with masses of 500 mass units. You might remember that we reached a mass of 300 mass units through artificial synthesis. This is the process. If you were capturing neutrons in a calm state, 
as in the red giant, for example, then we would follow the same process as that of fusion when capturing neutrons in a nuclear reactor. But when we have an explosion, a high density of neutrons is obtained. An intense capture of neutrons takes place until the shell is reached. The neutron capture cross-section of the shell drops sharply. Therefore, at this moment, because the neutron capture rate slows down, beta decay occurs. As we move upward along the scale of protons, we reach the so-called waiting point, A equals 100 and city, where it is necessary to wait for a beta decay before the start of another series of neutron captures, until reaching the next shell. We have now reached A equals 195. This rapid neutron capture process is also called the R process. It takes place once again, and when we reach the very heavy isotope of lead 238, then beta decay begins, which leads us to uranium. The parent of uranium in the R process is lead 238. This brings us to the question, will this process continue? However, we are not really interested in the reason why it stops at uranium. Basically, we have proven that there are no weak shells. The process could reach the next shell at 184 protons, and then the process would be repeated again. At this point, one would probably see beta decay, which would lead to a super-heavy nucleus. So the question remains. Will the process follow this path or not? Based on our knowledge of the R process, it should continue. But we do not know with what probability. This probability very much depends on what losses a very neutron-rich nucleus will suffer, in this case plutonium, after the beta decay begins. When plutonium-294, heavy plutonium, goes through beta decay, it synthesizes into curium, then into californium, then higher, eventually becoming a super-heavy nucleus. I would like to show you what a supernova explosion looks like. Just pay attention to these two scales. One scale will be temperature, and the other will be, if I'm not mistaken, a neutron flux. When the gaseous iron was compressed to a high density, the process began. Then it ended, the temperature drops and decays take place. As a result, all processes ended. This is uranium and thorium. There is a gap between lead, uranium and thorium because they are very short-lived. The question is whether there is a super-heavy nucleus here. The fact that two processes are working, both a slow process and a fast process, suggests that when we study the abundance of elements with an increase in atomic numbers in more detail, we will see two waiting points, not one, but two. One is for a slow process and the other is for a fast process. The abundance of elements can be depicted in a graph like this. This was after the Big Bang. These two elements started the burning process after which the fusion process in the star ends with iron. Then came the slow process, ending with lead, which is followed by the fast process. These are the four processes that we see, leading to this abundance of elements in the universe, in cosmic rays or the solar system.